the Middle East now, and uh, the two-state solution seems to be losing support amongst Israelis. A new poll published on I-24 News for the first time shows that Israelis are divided on a plan that would take its place. Elon Levy has the story. Two states, one state, whatever. The two-state solution is falling out of favor in Israel, but a new poll shows Israelis are divided on what could replace it. A poll commissioned by pro-settlement NGO Legal Grounds, which wants to apply Israeli law to the West Bank. Israelis have come to understand that they cannot put a sovereign state here overlooking 70% uh, of our population right here. Palestinian statehood would uh, actually catalyze conflict. That Palestinian state would become a terrorist entity. The poll asked Jewish Israelis if a Palestinian state in the West Bank is not an option, what solution do you prefer? Call it full Palestinian sovereignty on the 1967 borders with East Jerusalem as its capital, and only 10% support that. Palestinian autonomy in the towns and villages known as Areas A and B, plus Jordanian citizenship for Palestinians, gets 26%. Palestinian autonomy in those areas and an Israeli annexation of 60% of the West Bank Area C, 22% support. A full Israeli annexation of the West Bank, plus an option of Israeli citizenship for the Palestinians, 12%. And giving the Palestinians financial incentives to leave the West Bank, then annexing it, 30%. Will they resolve the conflict? Uh, probably not. Uh, but will they mitigate the conflict? Probably yes. What we are suggesting is that we open up the conversation uh, here in Israel to those alternatives. Nearly two-thirds of Jewish Israelis insist Israel's presence in the West Bank is not an illegal occupation. And a similar number believe a solution should not include evacuating settlements. Two solid convictions that may be pushing the Israeli public conversation towards full or partial annexation. But critics say the two-state solution is the only solution. Anyone that opposes the two-state solution is actually believe on the one state, either not democratic or not Jewish. All this idea about autonomy, it's another nicer way to say occupation. It's another nicer way to say apartheid, but it's not a real a, 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 a solution. Israel's elections are two months away. The two-state solution might not have a majority, but its opponents don't have a majority yet for an alternative vision. From Peduel in the West Bank, Elon Levy, I-24 News. All right, joining us now is Matthew Brodsky, a senior fellow at the Security Studies Group. Matthew, thank you for being with us. Uh, Matthew, President Trump didn't really give much emphasis to any kind of progress regarding a Middle East peace plan, what he has called the deal of the century in his State of the Union address last night. But uh, here's what he did have to say. Let's take a listen. Our approach is based on principle realism, not discredited theories that have failed for decades to yield progress. For this reason, my administration recognized the true capital of Israel and proudly opened the American embassy in Jerusalem. Uh, so, Matthew, you have uh, recently met with some senior White House officials. Where do things stand regarding the, the timing of a rollout, potentially? I'm assuming waiting for the Israeli elections to be settled. I think we'll most likely see the uh, waiting until the April elections, uh, but sometime right after that, I think there. I think the the team that's in place at the White House is very aware that there are a million reasons why not to release a plan. That there are always uh, there's always something happening within an Arab capital or around the region that would tell you maybe you should wait. But I think what they've done uh, rather successfully is. Uh, since coming in and taking on the challenge is working to understand, first of all, all the institutional knowledge from those people who have worked on the peace process beforehand, and they've really seemed to have assimilated that, but then to also learn uh, the correct lessons from it. So they're concentrating not just on the final status issues, but again, mm -hmm. they're focusing now on the economic development plan right. and making sure that they roll it out the correct way, which is something that I think has been uh, botched in previous administrations. But what, what can you tell us? 
about uh, the economic component because uh, that has been emphasized as, as one of the things that makes this plan different. What can you tell us about that? From the way I've, I've heard it uh, described is they would like to come in with uh, with sugar, essentially, mm -hmm. in order to create catch momentum more flies to begin with, with, with honey, right? Isn't that the expression? Right. Well, it, it, it's. It's a, yeah, and so it's essentially that it's not just uh, to deal with the political issues, the borders, refugee issues, Jerusalem final status, but also to provide the uh, blueprint looking many years out as to how the area will be developed, how Palestinian infrastructure will be developed, um, and to tie in the uh, Arab world, the Arab leaders, their support. Uh, they're having... a. Uh, at this point, they know that there are many ways that when they release uh, when they release this, that uh, Mahmoud Abbas, the Palestinian leader, will try to avoid and evade having a response. This is something that has been seen for many years. So they're trying to guard against uh, the different maneuvers that Abbas would make, whether it's trying to find uh, a shield with uh, the Arab leaders to uh, accept something but have it be outside of the bounds of of what was inside of the plan that's released, or whether he's going to end up trying to go to Putin to see if Putin can torpedo the initiative. These are all things that uh, I'm hearing the administration is really trying to make sure that they can essentially box in uh, the leadership into making a decision that it already appears as though the Palestinian people are far more behind than the leadership, which again is overstayed, again, this is my words, but overstayed its usefulness and time in, uh, in its current role and does not necessarily reflect the will of its people, certainly not in Gaza. Matthew, some uh, excellent points. Thank you as always. Matthew Brodsky will continue this conversation, I'm sure. All right, now this was uh, probably...